Hi guys, welcome to another series on my YouTube channel. So before I started card making, if you would have been following my journey, you would know that mixed media was the first thing that got me hooked on crafting. And you know, I have I as a person always like to try out new craft. Hence, you see a lot of scrapbooking videos, mixed media videos, card making videos. So it all depends on my mood. I generally like to do a lot of crafts on and off depending on what my mood strikes. I also do decoupage and a lot of altered art, a uh, lot of things basically. But mixed media was what got me hooked on crafting. And uh, I know mixed media can be overwhelming for a lot of people when, you know, you start your crafting journey or people who have just started with mixed media. So I thought I'll do a series called Mixed Media Basics on my YouTube channel where I speak about why you do certain basic things that you do in mixed media. You know, like this particular video is about that. Why do you need to use gesso? So uh, any mixed media video uh, or tutorial you watch on YouTube channel or any other paid tutorial, anything that you watch, the first thing that an artist does is prep their surface with gesso. Now, why do you need a gesso? Gesso is a primer. Now, what do I mean by primer is that it primes your surface. Now, mixed media, as the name suggests, you can use a lot of things in mixed media, things like MDF, things like wooden boxes, like how I'm using right now, things like glass, metal, resin, paper, chipboard, and uh, plastic, you know, so basically any junk that you have lying around that you think will good look on your composition, you can add anything. It is all about your imagination when it comes to mixed media and layering a lot of things one on top of the other to make a cohesive piece. So uh, these all mediums are the basis that we talked about, right? Like MDF is a porous medium, chipboard, paper, it's a porous medium. So what happens is that things like MDF and chipboard, they will not, they'll soak in all the sprays or paste you use. So let's say if I have created a piece where I add a resin frame on top of the chipboard and let's say I directly started spraying on them, the spray would behave very differently on chipboard. It will go on sticking to the chipboard, uh, sorry, it will be absorbed into the chipboard and on resin it will not stick at all because it's a glossy surface so you know each and every base that you use in mixed media behaves differently if you directly start applying sprays waxes on top of it without priming it and that is why you need to prime any surface in mixed media the base that you start off with and whatever layers that you add on top of it. So you will see people first priming, uh, you know, the base, like how I'm doing over here. This is a box which I plan to alter. Now, I'll be sharing this altered video later on, uh, but I just wanted to give you an example that this is how I gesso. And uh, since this was a very dark wooden box, you can see that the stain is coming through in some areas because the stain was so strong that it picked up my gesso and it uh, tinted my gesso to a light brown color. And that is why you see me adding two coats. Now, normally I add two coats of gesso. However, that can vary depending on the brand you use. The like over here, as you can see, you know, it has started staining. So in certain areas, I may go with three layers of gesso and it may also vary depending on what material you are gessoing on top of. So uh, things like chipboard paper, you can get away with just adding one layer of gesso because, you know, um, they are already a porous surface. So uh, once you add gesso, it gets easily binded onto that surface. However, things like glass, which is very sleek surface or smooth surface, then things like uh, resin, in that you may need to go with two layers of gesso because, uh, you know, it, it takes a surface to bind the gesso to. The, so the first layer is going to be that surface that comes on top of glass or gesso. And the second layer is where the gesso is actually binding itself to the first layer of gesso. So that is why I prefer uh, probably two coats 
overall so i don't use you know i don't use any logic when i sit and do mixed media i normally do two coats because with two coats of gesso that i do i know that it will stick on most of the surfaces and will create a blank or a cohesive canvas for me and then i know that everything is at a same porous level because everything is covered in gesso and then i can add uh, whatever i want to add so i can add paste i can add sprays i can add waxes i can add uh, texture paste and they will all behave the same way irrespective of whether my base is wood my base is glossy surface like glass or plastic or resin or my base is paper or chipboard so that is the basic thing or the basic reason why you need gesso technically on your mixed media projects now a common issue if you are living in a hot climate like india is that you know your gesso starts drying up your texture paste starts drying up your glitter paste your uh, clear uh, gel medium etc a lot of things drying up on you now i have had this issue uh, in a lot of brands uh, like i have had this issue that my craft angles paste getting thick on me i have had this issue in a couple of us brands where i have you know this has happened to me a couple of uk brands where this has happened to me so uh, the problem is not with the formulation of the medium as far as i understand the problem is i think the climate of uh, india since india you would know is a very sun rich country so so the temperature in countries like india is more hot than you know probably other countries where most of the time it is cold or you know there is a winter so what happens is a lot of moisture from your paste converts into steam due to the heat and then that moisture is lost causing your paste to thicken up now there are a couple of ways in which you can revive your paste i will be making a separate video on that on how you know i revive my paste but uh, for gesso where you in the start you would have seen that i added a little bit of water in my gesso now during that time my gesso was not thick it was uh, because this is a new bottle that i had just opened now let's say if your gesso was a couple of months old and you know if you start noticing that it is starting to thicken up then what you can do is uh if it has already thickened up add some mineral water to it now most of the uh gel based uh, acrylic gel based products like gesso or uh, glimmer paste or uh, texture paste or uh, gloss gels things like those they are all water based acrylic gels for most of the brands i would not say all the brands but most of them including craft angles so what you can do is you can add a little bit of water now this has to be mineral water because your regular top tap water may contain some impurities you know which over the period of time will react with this acrylic gels and may create things like uh, you know uh, some kind of algae or moss etc which you don't want to happen on your mediums you know so that is why just add a little bit like 3 4 drops uh, start with 3 4 drops now depending on how thick your medium has gone you may need to add a little bit more now there are also other couple of ways which i'll be discussing in my other video which i'll be posting soon but for my gesso what i normally do is add uh, you know a couple of drops of water and the best way is that whenever uh you get a foil with that so uh, all the mediums generally have a foil top on top of it you know the bottle so never throw away those foils keep those foils on your bottle so that uh, whenever you are done just put that foil back and then close the lid so what will happen is it will prevent even further uh heat being entered into your bottle causing your uh, uh water to evaporate or uh, sorry liquid to evaporate so it will help you retain the moisture in the medium now uh, you can add uh, mineral water what i normally do is whenever my gesso is getting older you know and it starts becoming a bit thicker once i'm done with the project and i plan to close the lid and put it in my uh, storage 
I just add three, four drops of water, which will cover the top surface of that medium, and then I close it. So what will happen is it will create that protective water layer sheet, which will then evaporate over the period of time, and it will retain the moisture that is already there in bottle. Hence, the chances of your uh, gesso drying up on you will be less. Now, a lot of people also ask me, can I use gesso instead of gesso? Can I use acrylic paints or things like that? Now, uh, I can talk about craft angles because I know uh, how it works and you know the formulations, etc. Since I am the part of the team. So I can tell you that the formulation of craft angles gesso is very different from the formulations of the craft angles paint. Hence, what gesso gives to your base is going to be very different from uh, how the paint would work. But if you are in a pinch and you just have paint and you know you don't have gesso, then you can probably get away with. However, if you are planning to sell a piece, I would always suggest to invest in gesso whenever you know you are. Uh, doing things like mixed media where uh, or you know decoupage boxes etc where you need to do a little bit of priming before you do your paintings and things like that because that small step will save you a lot of hassles later on if your uh, base is not primed properly so i would always suggest prime your bases especially if you are planning to sell then you know and you should do it because you want that piece to last longer and anybody who buys it will want it want a good quality from you now craft angles gessos comes in uh, three colors primary three colors which is white black and uh, clear all of them have same properties and they work exactly the way I talked about uh, the white gesso that I am showing you over here. However, the color varies depending on the color you buy. I hope this part of uh, the gesso uh, basics was informative. I'll later on show you some demo in this video. Another thing is uh, craft angles gessos, irrespective of the colors, are extremely fast drying. Hence, you would have seen that, you know, uh, it uh, by the time your first layer is done from start to the end, your where you had started with the first layer, uh, the craft angles gesso has already dried. So in very uh, humid climate, like how I am right now, you know, it is rains in Mumbai. And that is why the climate that I'm working in currently is very humid. So that is in such conditions only you would normally need a heat gun or, you know, you let this air dry for five to ten minutes and you are done. That is how quick craft angles gessos dry. And that is the reason why, you know, craft angles gesso, since they have a special fast drying formulation, you need to make sure that. Once you are done, you close off the lid because, you know, we normally work with our ACs on. We normally work in a hot climate. We normally work with our fans on. So all those things will lead to your gesso or medium getting thickened up over the period of time. Or the best thing is what I normally do and what I have seen a lot of teachers do as well is that whatever amount of material that they need, like in, especially in case of chalk paints and things like gesso, they remove it in a small palette and then they use it from that. So as and when they need it, they add things to it. Now, here I wanted to show you a demo of why do you need a gesso? So just a real life comparison. So, you know, you will get an idea of why it is necessary to prime a surface. Now, here I have a couple of novel, old novel pages where I wanted to show you the difference. Now, as I talked about earlier, things like paper and chipboard are porous surfaces. So if I spray directly on top of it using my sprays, you know, without priming it or without doing anything, my paper will soak in all the sprays, all the medium, all the texture paste, depending on what you use on top of it. It will soak in all the moisture from the waxes as well. So here I am just dividing the paper into two parts. One will be no gesso where I'll not add gesso. And the second part will be where I'm adding gesso. And then I'll spray on top of it. Now this logic remains same. Whether you use sprays, whether you use alcohol-based sprays, whether you use liquid watercolors, liquid acrylics, anything. Since the base is porous, 
like paper is a porous medium wherever you are not adding any gesso it will start soaking the moisture of that product whatever you put on top of it irrespective of whatever product that you put on top of it so this was uh, as you can already see you know it is not blending the colors are not blending wherever you know it has formed those droplet kind of things it is just starting to soak in as and how it was added on top of the paper now if you wanted to go for that kind of look you can definitely do that but uh, i don't prefer like as i said you know i prefer priming all my base so that i know that they react in the same way irrespective of whatever materials i have put below that in mixed media now over here i'm just uh, adding some gesso on top of it and as i said you know with things like paper and chipboard you don't need to add multiple coats of gesso because uh, with one layer itself it will soak in the gesso and it will create that non porous surface and now whatever spray i'll add on top of it it will start uh, blending it will stay on top of the page it will not get soaked into the page now for the purpose of the video since i did not want to wait i have quickly dried up the uh, page with my uh, heat gun again a product which i highly recommend now you can see that you know how the colors has pooled up it is not getting soaked like how on the no gesso part and here you can see wherever that blue and uh, yellow are meeting they'll start creating the green color as well because it is getting time to stay on top of the gesso and it is getting time to blend with each other and to react with each other and things like that so uh, as you can see the behavior is very different when you have a porous surface and when you have a non porous surface and uh, these things remain the same irrespective of the medium you use as i said most of the gels are water based mediums for most of the brand sprays are also a water based medium so how you see over here you can see the reaction of gesso surface varies a uh, very differently from how it reacted on a non gesso surface you know there was no blending there was no spreading there was no uh, it just simply got soaked into the paper if you, you don't use gesso so that is how even your things like uh, texture paste etc will behave now if you apply a texture paste on top of a no surface which is not gesso what will happen is it will start uh, soaking the paper uh, it will start soaking the moisture from the texture paste very quickly and it will cause the texture paste to dry weirdly which may even cause cracks to happen in the texture paste which you don't want so that is why i always suggest to all my students and customers that you know whenever you are buying irrespective of any brand whenever you are buying a uh, whenever you know you are planning to do things like mixed media and other projects always make sure that you prime your project correctly now if you it is a mixed media project or a decoupage project where you are planning to do a lot of stenciling using various kind of texture paste etc i would always suggest that you prime your base because in the end if you want to sell uh, the piece you want it to last longer now the second uh, example that i wanted to show you was these clay pieces so these clay pieces are from uh, the molds that i have created that i already have and what i'm trying to do is uh, one piece i will gesso and one piece i'll not gesso so on the no gesso part i'll keep it as is and on the gesso part i'll add gesso to the clay piece and then you will again see how it reacts differently when i put sprays on top of them again clays by nature just like paper and chipboard is very porous in nature so you know it will start soaking whatever you put on top of it it is not like ceramics or uh, uh, china uh, the articles that you get which looks like plastic you know it is not like that so it will uh, it's not a smooth surface or a slick surface which is non porous it is a porous surface so that is why whatever you add on top of it it will literally soak in so much so that you know it will start melting that is why it is very important that whenever you are using clay pieces be it air dry clay or uh, you know dent plus powders a lot of people use then uh, things like uh, 
a dry paper clay etc whatever you use make sure that you gesso it because clay has a tendency to soak in sprays etc and once it starts to soak a lot of it you know because you don't get that color you start on spraying a lot of it and then it will start getting mushy and squishy which is not what you want on top of your mixed media project so that is why always always whenever you are using a clay piece on your mixed media or decoupage uh, project use gesso on top of it so here you can see how the green part has soaked in the uh, the one which has no gesso which is green in color it has soaked in all the sprays and it has become light in color it has lost its vibrancy because everything got soaked into the clay and the white piece which i had just soaked was not soaked into the clay it created that non porous surface and that is why you can see the vibrancy of the sprays on top of that now the next piece that i wanted to show you was a plastic surface so paper was a porous surface and uh, plastic is a non porous surface you know it's a sleek smooth surface and if you directly put uh, sprays on top of it it will not adhere to it so here you will see me adding gesso on the right uh, part on the right lid so i just wanted to show you a difference on both porous and non porous surfaces so what do i mean by porous surfaces is porous surfaces means that something that soaks in whatever is put on top of it now things like paper chipboard mdf wood are porous surfaces things like plastic uh ceramics metal and glass all those are non porous surfaces so whatever you put on top of it anything like water based uh like sprays or wax based they will not stick to it because the surface is extremely smooth and non porous so it will not soak in anything for that you will then add if you add things like gesso which i am doing on the right side it will convert that into a porous surface So you'll see the difference in a second when I start spraying the sprays. So again, I'm using the same Craft Angles Art sprays, uh, the yellow color and the blue color. Everything that I have used in this video, except of course things like lids and clay pieces, which I have created or you know, which is with me since ages. I don't even know what, where these lids had come from. but uh, those things i won't be able to link but apart from that things like gesso sprays waxes etc everything i'll be linking down below for you so you know if you want wish to check out you can check the see now here since my plastic is a non porous surfaces gesso will take a bit, little bit more time to dry and that is why i'm using the heat tool to dry it quickly now on the left side you can see that you know the spray is just beading up it is not sticking to the plastic that is because it is a non porous surface and over here since we have gessoed the plastic now the sprays has something to stick on top of because that gesso has created that surface for us where you know things like uh, sprays or other mediums can stick to and that is the difference of why you should always prime your base irrespective of the uh you know the material you use because everything will then behave in the same way if you prime it properly half of the battle of things like uh, you know where you are doing mixed media projects where you are adding a lot of layers or where you are doing a decoupage project where you are doing a lot of stenciling etc half of your battle is already won so just to save a few bucks don't do that prime your surface properly especially if you plan to wish uh, sell that piece now i'm just taking a tissue paper to show you that the spray has not stuck to the lid at all and you know i can easily remove it even after heating it for a couple of minutes you can see that the spray did not stick to the plastic now the same thing if i do on the um, the piece which was gessoed only the spray where it was not completely dry or the certain areas of gesso which was not completely dry only that got removed you can see so there are few white patches that is because the gesso was also not completely dry by the time you know i added sprays on top of it and that is why only those pieces were those areas were removed and they could, you could see white in them rest all was yellow in color because the spray got stuck to the gesso and then you know uh, you could not remove it with a dry paper
Now the same thing I'm just uh, doing on the back of the lids because I wanted to show you uh, with waxes. Now we have tried uh, with sprays. So any water-based medium that you use will follow the same rule that the sprays followed. And since wax are uh, you know an oil-based, gel-based medium, I wanted to show you how waxes also behave on a gessoed surface and on a non-gessoed surface. And that is why I'm just showing you this example. Now here also I follow the same thing. The lid on the right has gesso. I'm just trying it pretty quickly just to make sure that you know everything is dry and then I'll add a layer of wax. The wax I'm using is Craft Angles um, wax which is amethyst so it is a very beautiful shiny purple color and again waxes are a super hit or you know waxes are I love putting waxes on my mixed media project. Now you can see over here that since the plastic lid was a non-porous surface, I'm not able to stick the wax. Wherever my fingers touch, you know, it starts picking up that wax. That is why I just added a little bit of extra wax and I've just kept it there. So that, uh, you know, let's see after a couple of minutes if it gets stuck to the plastic or not. Now on the right hand, I was just checking whether my gesso is completely dry or not. Once I was I was sure that it is completely dry. I'm just putting a layer of wax and you can see the difference. It is not being picked up whenever my finger goes back in the same area and it is giving me a cohesive coverage across because now the wax has a area or a surface on which the wax can stick to the plastic, which is our gessoed surface. And that is why you need gesso on your projects. So over here, you can see that already the wax has, uh, you know, uh, blended into the gessoed surface. And now if I put my, if I rub my uh, tissue very hardly, wherever the gesso was not dry, only that area has come off. Rest of the area has already blended into the gessoed surface. However, if I put the same tissue on top of the non-gessoed lid, you can see everything comes off because the wax did not uh, get attached to the plastic lid because there was no porous surface or no gessoed surface on what it could stick to. So that was the video all about guys and over here you can see that my gessoed surface has already dried and you can see the stain coming through even after putting two three coats. I think it's a lost cause. Anyways I'm going to do a lot of uh, brown coloring on top of it. So it does not matter to me that you know that uh, trunk has become dark brown in color. And I hope this video was helpful and you know you now understand why you need to add gesso on your projects. I am planning to make such mixed media basics videos. Do let me know in comments what you think of such videos and would you like to see more of these videos? If yes, then I'll definitely make time and you know I'll make such kind of videos for you all. I hope you are having a good day. Please be safe and take care.